Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathix. And today I have a question. How many of you guys are kind of sick and tired of your job and you want to quit? Right? You'd be better off on your own, doing your own thing. You have like some dream job. Um, or maybe you think, you know, the grass is, is greener at this other company. Um, maybe, maybe you're stuck in college and you just can't stand like all the classes that you have to go through to get this degree that maybe you don't even want. Um, well, first of all, let me tell you, you're not alone. Many people have the same problem. And um, I myself for a long time felt like that. And, and through different periods of my life. Um, but what I've come to realize is that uh, quitting your day job, so to speak, is not a solution, right? Because um, if you're doing things that you're not inspired by, um, then no matter what you do, no matter what changes you make, no matter how many times you quit a job, it's not going to fix the problem. The problem isn't the job or the people. The problem is your mindset. And so today what I want to talk about is like how you can change the mindset at almost any job you're at um, in order to make it seem worthwhile. Not, not even make it seem. It will be worthwhile. But it's 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 all up here. It's all about how you um, how you uh, look at things and how you perceive your current situation. So the first thing that I want to touch on is that this is I'm generally speaking. This isn't everybody. This isn't every job. Some jobs there are employers and bosses out there that uh, and even co-workers out there that maybe you should change the job because they're creating an unhealthy environment but I would say for about 90 percent of the jobs out there and, and classes or whatever it is that you're doing it's that's not the case the real thing the real problem is that you <clears throat> are um, all you're focusing on is the negative aspects of the job and so that's one mindset change there is like you know instead of focusing on the things that you don't like about it try to focus on the things you do now I know your answer to that your response would be mine which is but there is nothing fun to do at a job it's all work and I would agree with you I am not a big fan of meetings I am not a big fan of Excel spreadsheets or Microsoft Office or answering telephone calls none of that is my anywhere near what I love to do however I found a way to make all of that seem very worthwhile and not, again I keep saying seem but make it worthwhile for me in a way that I believe at the core of myself and um, the reason is because a long time ago, I realized what I wanted to do in life. I know what my goal is. And so the first thing, the first step to this change in mindset is knowing what you want to do in life. Knowing what it is and who it is you want to become. Um, and the thing, the thing about that, this video, the scope of this video is not to talk about how to find your dream job or figure out what your passion is. There are plenty of videos out on the web. I've probably done a couple that you know would help with that. So if you're at this stage in your life where you're not sure what you want to do, try it. That's the step number one. Figure out who you are at the core of yourself. What are the things that you enjoy to do that other people would pay you to do? right that's that's the key you have to add some value back in order to get something so that's number one and then number two um, is once you know what you want to do set up a plan what is your plan what is your uh, strategy for the next few years or maybe months right to to go from from we're gonna use a writer as an example because this is very common right um, 
if you want to become a writer who works out of their house or maybe part-time as a writer, then you need to come up with a step by not a step by step plan, but a pretty well thought out plan of okay, how do I go from working full time at this job to eventually working full time in my house? And so a lot of things, and again, this is going to be very abridged version, but in that plan, you would want to think, okay, how can I cut down on my finances? Uh, uh, you know, like pay off debt or, um, you know, cut down on, on bills. And then you would try to figure out, okay, how can I start writing now little things that can help bring in income and also establish myself as a writer? And, and that way I can gauge like how much I can get for each job and build credibility, right? And then, um, and then, you know, as your plan progresses, it should eventually wean you off of the full-time job that you're in now that you're probably not too happy with, and then get you to being able to do whatever it is, in this example, write full-time from your house and be perfectly happy with life. Now, another thing is that you have to face reality. No matter if you're working full-time for someone over here or you're working full-time at your house for yourself over here both are going to require hard work and dedication in order to succeed okay it and and this one will probably actually require more effort and we'll get to that but um because you're doing things on your own and for you know you're basically becoming an entrepreneur in a sense so um don't ever think that the grass is greener on the other side like you're not like if you get to work from home you're gonna get to sleep in every day and be lazy like that's not the case that is a false sense of reality you have to have a very clear idea that if you're on your own that means you have to be not only waking yourself up on time but you have to be the one pushing yourself and driving the direction of whatever business venture that you intend on doing um, so that's that's that. Now, how does all this tie into not quitting your day job, right? What what is right now, Josh? You're telling me that I should look for another job, like I should try to make a plan. Yes, you should. But the thing is, if you think about it in those kind of in that kind of uh, you know step by step process, you should realize that it's going to take a while at least a few weeks more than likely a few months to years to get from point A to point B and because of that you're going to need a job to sustain you and to get you through both you know financially and there are other benefits and that's what I want to talk about so if you look at your job now with that lens of this is going to allow me to get to there this job, this full-time job that I'm working now is going to give me all the tools and assets I need to transition to the, the dream job that I want, right? And so a lot of people call this a bridge job, and I've uh, done another video about bridge jobs. Um, but so now the question is, now with that lens, with that um, perspective, looking at the job you're in now, now you can go at it and say, okay, I am excited about this job because this job is going to get me to go where I want to be. But now that you know that, now you've got to squeeze as much juice from that orange as you possibly can. So I've written down a couple, uh, a couple things that, I, that I've done in the past in order to you know, get the biggest bang for your buck. Um, one of the things is, for me, uh, for a long time, it was very difficult to find the motivation to want to go work out, right? It seemed like just this extra tedious task where I, you know, in grueling and in, in this workout, I'm sweating and dying and, you know, I could be doing half a million other things that I would rather be doing. Now <clears throat> that I've changed my perspective, what I do um, is, of course, um, when time allots, I try to go to the gym while I'm at work. And this, this helps in so many ways, right? 
I don't have to tell you the benefits of working out. Hopefully all of you understand that by now. Um, and also, like after a workout, how clear and refreshed your mind feels because your body has kind of been able to work out all the kinks, right? Um, and, it's, and it's more awake and more alive and more energetic. Um, so it helps me when I go work out roughly in the middle of the day. Some people do it in the morning. Whatever works for you, but the thing is, if you do it while you're at your job, if you have that flexibility and you have the time, what that allows for is it allows you to break up the day, it allows you to get more.